We are here with Thomas Henriksen, ceramist and president of Ceramco Inc. to learn about Ceramco's 3D printing capabilities and gain an industrial perspective on the process itself. Along the way, Thomas will compare it to Ceramco's conventional ceramic parts manufacturing, ceramic injection molding, or SIM. So tell us, Thomas, is there a difference between 3D, AM, or LCM? Um, no, those, let's eliminate the confusion with the terminology. Those are really all the same. 3D is 3D printing, AM is additive manufacturing, LCM is perhaps the least used term, but that's lithography-based ceramic manufacturing. Okay, so why don't we begin with additive manufacturing similarities to SIM? Well, the green parts are made by some for forming process, and injection molding you have a forming tool or, or a mold, then in 3D printing is really just a, a tool-free way to shape something. So um, the, the parts, as they're green, need to be fired in either case. So uh, we find that actually the, the as-fired nature of the parts in either technology are, are virtually identical. The fired densities are, are really the same. You get um, about the same uh, type of design considerations to, to address when you're manufacturing these parts. Uh, you want uniform wall thicknesses and you need to be careful about thin and thick wall conditions, sharp corners, things like this. Um, both really have limitations of course and um, as we are learning this technology we find that um, these issues are uh, very similar and uh, both processes are, are rather temperamental actually. So can you list strengths and weaknesses of additive manufacturing in comparison to SIM? Well, yeah, the, what's new to us with the 3D printing is we, we don't have the ability to shape a part in our conventional tooling anymore. This part is being shaped tool free. So we need to add what you call support structures that are used to, to, to prop up the geometry if it's necessary. Um, we're finding that you really need to do some very intricate work on these parts, especially after they're printed. Uh, like removing those support structures is a factor. There's, there's labor involved in, in a 3D printed part still. It's not done after it's printed. Uh, those efficiencies in injection molding that you have where maybe you can recycle some of the, the flash and, and sprues and everything right back into the molding machine. You can't really do that with 3D printing so it's a, there's some material waste involved and uh, we find that 3D printing has the, a rather long thermal cycle for when you're firing the part. Uh, there are some considerations in the, the strengths of the part that if you really didn't have the process quite right, um, you, you could have issues. Uh, it's a little less scalable than, than your injection molding. If you have a multi-cavity automatically running injection molding tool, you really get a lot more throughput than you do running a, a 3D printer um, where it's really limited to the size of your printer and, and how fast it prints. Um, so. There are some software limitations as well in the 3D printer you don't have to deal with otherwise in, in conventional molding. Uh, it has to do with um, uh, being able to interrupt the process if the printing uh, has a problem, uh, things like that. <coughs> Excuse me, things like that. And then uh, actually the, the cost at this point of the 3D printing is, is really a lot higher than injection molding. Okay and now AM strengths? Oh, certainly strengths. Uh, the, the, being able to produce a design now that you couldn't make before, you, couldn't, you can't machine that shape or you can't even mold that shape, that becomes a reality now. You can make a part 
uh, just about any design that you can come up with. So um, those are 3D printing only type of designs. We're okay with those. Uh, we certainly would like to align ourselves to uh, go into a production with a customer. So if it's a 3D printing only design that may not bode well if they needed a really high quantity, but um, they can at least really make a new part without having to invest in tooling. Tooling can cost anywhere from $300 to $30,000, I mean, and up. So that right there is up, removing that that barrier to, to getting a ceramic part made. And uh, you you really can make a lot of small parts with a, a 3D printer, uh, similar to injection molding. I mean, you, you don't generally make really large parts and, and 3D printing in this case, you don't either. So um, actually really small, complicated parts, you, you can print a lot of them at once. So you actually can make some good production with these machines in that case. Um, also in a in an automated sense because once you get into production with one of these machines making a part repeatedly um, you can set the machine and go home come back the next day and and have the parts done so there's that component of of automation to it which is helpful for saving labor you know and uh, in those situations you en you end up really dialing in the process just like you do in molding so you can uh, fine-tune that program and really improve the cycle time. Thomas, are there any significant differences in the physical or mechanical properties? There are. Uh, we, we've only done some early work on this. Uh, if you don't have some settings in the printer just right, you can actually have problems with some of the strength of the layers and you really need to be cognizant of the direction you're printing a part in. If, if anything, you, you just need to be aware that there's possibilities of uh, some uh, weakness between the layers in, in production. So uh, we found that in your, your printing in an XY plane and in the Z direction, you, you think about the application of that part and, and you may not print it in a certain orientation because it, it could actually break if there was a, a problem with the strength of the layers. So can additive manufacturing be used to accurately prototype parts that are ultimately intended for sim production? Oh, absolutely. The, the injection molded parts and the 3D printed parts, like I said in the beginning, you you have really the same mechanism there. Taking a green part, you're firing it. The as-fired tolerances are the same, the densities are the same, the material chemistries are the same. Um, but what we've been able to do now is give a customer a prototype without having to tool up. And if they need to revise that prototype, which is often the case, you take and revise that model, the 3D file, and, and print another one until the design is right and in that process you haven't invested in tooling, changing tooling around or anything. But are the material compositions the same? Yeah, I mean technically the 3D printer has 99.9 percent .9 alumina and our production alumina is 99.8 percent. Uh, honestly there's a very subtle difference there. Um, I mean we've done some work making our own slurries as well so that I mean going to the powder metallurgy end of things we can we can make specific chemistries if, if required generally speaking the alumina and the zirconia that we're running in the 3d printer are are the same as what you would get from an injection molded ceramic of the same material so Thomas, can you summarize for us why Ceramco made its investment in additive manufacturing and perhaps more to the point, how your customers benefit by it being here, especially those with parts destined for SIM? Well, the foundation of our company is, is, is making parts that really nobody else can make. So being first to the 
plate on having a 3D printer in the United States was was important for us. So uh, we made the investment, and it, it's really appropriate for us uh, as a company that does injection molding. Uh, 3D printing has been done for decades already in other materials, just not ceramic until now. So uh, being able to do that and integrated into our company was, was natural. Uh, the parts that we make are generally going to be the, the complicated, more complex type of geometries, such as an injection molding part usually is. And it, it, it works really well in the case a customer is buying an injection molded part maybe in the, in the future. They need a prototype. As I said, the uh, injection moldable part is really going to be made the same way. Well, we want to thank you, Thomas Hendrickson from Ceramco Inc., for spending time with us today. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for your interest. We have uh, only had the machine about a year, so we're still very excited about it. We've, we've got all kinds of new ideas, but please bring yours, and uh, we would like to see what we could do for you.